excited about uh, today's call. A um, couple of housekeeping things. We're going to record this, so other mentors who couldn't make it tonight will be able to, um, to benefit from it. So if you want your camera off, that's up to you, but just to warn you that we are, um, we're recording tonight. And there will be, if you could all be on mute, that would be helpful, saves any background noise, as, as you know. Um, and there will be time for questions to Nadia after, uh, after the talk. So um, please uh, have a think about questions, drop them into the chat um, or indicate in the chat that you'd like, an ask, uh, you'd like to ask a question and then we'll call on you to unmute and ask your question. But we'll leave questions till the end. Um, our first, so we have Nadia Finer with us today. You can probably all see her. She's Hello. Waving, waving to you. Hi. <laughs> um, I first came across uh, Nadia when I was listening to Women's Hour back in December, I think, Nadia, wasn't it? And I yeah, was, it was so. A while ago. <laughs> it was a while ago, but I first heard um, your ideas and your thoughts on um, shyness. And I was um, so impressed. I thought, well, we're going to have to get hold of this lady and see if we can work with her, um, with our mentors. So and the more I found out about you and learned about you, the more impressed and inspired I was. Um, so Nadia is a business coach and a published author, and hopefully we're going to hear a little bit about her book um, later on. She's a podcaster, an inspirational speaker, and has helped adults and children find their voice um, throughout the world, sort of internationally. So um, you may have seen the website Shine Mighty, which is beautifully designed and is really accessible. Um, and it's a great resource for us to use with our girls. So rather than me spending any more time chatting away, I'm gonna hand you over to Nadia, who's going to um, explain shy, understanding shyness. So Nadia, yes. thank you so much for being with us. Hello, um, hi everyone. I hope you can hear me okay, first of all. Yeah, okay, good. Cause I just, I've switched to the power mic. So hopefully that's uh, gonna help me uh, find my voice <laughs> even more powerfully than I would have done otherwise. Um, so like Paula says, my name's Nadia Feiner and I'm the founder of Shy and Mighty. Um, and the reason that we're here today is because um, I want to talk to you about shyness and about how to help shy and um, quiet people to find their voice. Um, I think I've always been a shy person. Um, in fact, I think I was probably born shy, but um, I can remember um, the day that I decided to, to hide away and uh, keep myself small. Um, I remember it vividly. I was about 14 and um, I was in a French lesson um, at school and we were in this brand new language laboratory. Um, it was the first time I'd used it and I'm aging myself here because there were cassette machines <laughs> and you had to wear these big headphones and we were told to record ourselves speaking and then listen back to what we'd said and kind of listen to our pronunciation and work on our pronunciation. Um, and I loved French, so I was pretty enthusiastic about it. Um, I recorded myself say some stuff about a film, I think it was, and I felt very confident because I, I liked French. And then I hit play um, to listen back to what I had just said. And that's where things got a little bit strange um, because what I heard was the sound of um, a little kid talking, but saying exactly what I had just said. And so I got very confused because I was thinking, hang on, that, who is that? And why are they saying exactly what I had just said? What are the chances of that, I thought. And then I realised that it was actually me talking. Um, and I had this kind of moment where everything stopped still and I thought oh my gosh you know it dawned on me that that was me that was my voice and I was absolutely um, horrified because I didn't realize that's how I sounded you know in those days we didn't have um, snapchat and instagram reels and all that jazz that like we had none of that so I'd never heard how I sounded before and I was absolutely mortified and I decided then and there, I made a limiting decision that would affect me for many years to come. 
um, I think it was kind of conscious but also subconscious um, I decided to hide away um, and keep this little voice of mine um, under wraps um, I decided age 14 that I was going to be as inconspicuous and um, small as possible because I didn't want people to judge me or laugh at me or think I was weird um, I basically didn't want anyone to see me. So um, I avoided doing a lot of things and hid away. I avoided doing things at school, like being in plays, singing on stage, going on stage for any reason at all, <laughs> speaking up in the class, sort of in front of a group, giving talks. I, as I, as I got older, I avoided phoning people I didn't know, leaving voicemail messages, um, doing anything where, you know, people would hear my voice or see me. Um, and it was very limiting, as you can imagine. Um, so my shyness cost me a lot. Um, it's cost me so much. And it's you know, it's still part of me, although I'm a lot more mighty than I was, um, it still affects me now. And I'm not alone. 57% of people are shy. Over half of the British population, men and women, people of all ages, over half of us are shy. And yet we don't talk about shyness. Um, it's not surprising, really, because <laughs> we're shy. <laughs> Um, but I think that's why it's so important that you're here today and that we are having this conversation. Um, you know, shyness is not discussed. It's not talked about in schools, um, in the workplace. Um, it, it's kind of, it's like a dirty little secret almost, but it's something that affects half of the people on the planet. Um, and you can imagine that well, it's not surprising that we don't talk about shyness as we're shy. Um, and because we struggle to speak up, we find it hard to kind of articulate why we feel the way we do and how we're feeling. So it's a kind of mystery almost, <laughs> sort of a very silent, a very silent subject. Um, and so that's why I want us to be having this conversation today. I feel like if we um talk about shyness we can um work together um as shy people and outgoing people all together to help kind of unleash the silent potential um in our in our girls in our population um in our wider population in our society and so today we're going to kind of cover three things these are kind of the three things i think we need to be doing um as a society to help um, tap into that silent potential. So first of all, awareness, um, increasing awareness and understanding of shyness. Second of all, actions. So giving shy people themselves the tools and skills they need to work with their shyness so that they can become more mighty. And thirdly, assistance. So looking at the way society and structures are, are set up and established so that we can help support shy people. So that's awareness, actions and assistance. So let's start with awareness. Um, firstly, what is shyness? I mean, it sounds like a basic question, but it's actually um, it's maybe, you know, you might be surprised to find out kind of how it works and, and what actually it is. So shyness is this tendency to feel awkward, worried or tense during social encounters. We feel uncomfortable when things or people are new or unfamiliar. Um, so the words that you find cropping up are awkward, self-conscious, scared, worried. Um, we feel reserved. We hold ourselves in reserve. Um, we hold ourselves back. It's linked to kind of fear of judgment. So worrying about how people perceive us, what they'll think of us. Will we be good enough? Um, and ultimately, it's 
I could go into this for hours, but I won't because it will <laughs> take ages. Um, but it's our brain trying to keep us safe from danger. Um, if you think back to kind of caveman times, um, you know, you can't have everybody out there fighting um, lions. You have to have some of the people in the cave keeping everyone safe and making sure that the community are, you know, protected. So uh, there's there's a reason for it. Um, and it's actually quite smart when you think about it. But um, the upshot is when you feel shy, it's like a big elastic band kind of holding you back and um, you want to meet people, you want to socialise, um, you want to say yes to opportunities, but there's something holding you back. And because of that, you prefer to, we prefer to hide um, where we feel safe. Um, you, you all probably know about physical symptoms of shyness. So things like blushing and sweating or having a really, your heartbeat really fast, shaking, not being able to speak up, all those kinds of things affect you physically. And you've got all these thoughts going on inside your head as well about maybe not being good enough. What do they think of me? And all, and those things combined impact your behavior. So you don't put your hand up in class, don't speak up in a meeting, you don't put your opinions forward. Um, we hide and we miss out. So my shyness has caused me to miss out. And yeah, I would say there's a cost associated with shyness. We're not putting up our hands, we don't speak up, we don't share our ideas and opinions, we avoid difficult conversations, we're not involved, we're kind of on the edges and um, we miss out on opportunities and fun. And I think um, that there are facts, <laughs> not very cheering uh, facts, but I shall tell you them. Um, we are, we're less likely to do well at work. So outgoing people are 45% more likely than shy people to work in a higher managerial role. We are less likely to make good money. Um, outgoing people are more than twice as likely than shy people to have a household income over 100 grand. We're not that happy either. So only 4.9% of shy people are very happy. We're half as likely to be very happy than outgoing people. And we're more than twice as likely to be very unhappy. So it's not ideal um, in lots of ways. And I think it kind of can be summed up with this idea that we're standing on the sidelines. You know, we're kind of on the edge watching other people get stuck in. We've got, we're smart and intelligent often and we have knowledge and skills and ideas and insights and solutions, but we keep them to ourselves. And you can imagine that when that happens in school, in relationships, in the home, in meetings, organisations and society as a whole, everyone loses out. Um, and I think because of that, shyness is actually a diversity and inclusion issue. If shy people represent 57% of the population and 57% of the population are potentially not speaking up or being heard, um, then it is a diversity issue because you need a mixture of people, of personalities. Um, we need something called cognitive diversity. You can't just have rooms filled with um, the same kind of person from the same background with the same perspectives um, because um, the best decisions would not be made. <laughs> To put it lightly, <laughs> I'm sure you all know about uh, diversity. So when the loudest voices are dominant and quieter people stay quiet, our brilliant ideas and thoughts are lost. And I would say where the silent potential in every classroom, um, in every meeting room, and unless we raise awareness of shyness, then our opinions and ideas will continue to be silent and everyone misses out. I mean, if you think about it in an organisation, let's say, um, a really kind of affordable way to tap into new ideas um, 
and get a richer set of perspectives without having to hire new people would be to make it possible for everyone to speak up and be heard you know ultimately you've got half of your half of your people who are not sharing their their best work okay so that's awareness I could rant on about that I'll get on my soapbox although I would not probably want to do it if anyone was watching <laughs> Okay, um, so let's think about actions. What can shy people themselves, what can we do to help us become more mighty? Um, now, shy people, we don't need to, we're not broken, we don't need to be fixed. You know, I described the experience of shyness, but I would also argue that it's a personality type as well as being something that um, comes about and is triggered by certain events or, or uncertain situations. You know, because of that, we're not broken. Um, we shouldn't have to pretend to be something we're not. You know, you can't f spend your life um, with a mask on pretending to be an outgoing person when you're not. Um, you could try, but it would be exhausting. And I, I feel like, um, it wouldn't be authentic. Plus, um, let, I think we should own our shyness. It's not, um, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm actually quite proud to be like this. And I think that there's a space in the world for quieter, more considered voices. You know, I, I kind of hear, I used to be embarrassed and be hiding all the time, but now I realise that my shyness is nothing to be ashamed of and I don't mask it or apologise for it. Um, I realise there's power in it. I'm strong um, in spite of the fact that I'm shy, in spite of it, and also because of it. Um, I think that when you find things difficult like this, like if this was easy breezy for me, maybe it wouldn't have the impact that it has because this is challenging for me. You know, when I have to push myself to do certain things, I think that makes me stronger. So there's strength in our shyness and I, I think embracing it and owning it is a good thing. Um, layered on top of that, we actually have skills. I would say, I think superpowers sometimes sounds a bit twee or a bit glib to me, but um, I think that we have skills because of our shyness. So when you're not always talking, you're listening and observing. Um, we are good at lots of things. We're empathetic. Um, kind, we think deeply, we have this very strong internal dialogue <laughs> going on. Um, we develop ideas and solve problems in our heads um, before we open our mouths. And if we can just find the confidence and the um, safety that we need to speak up, then um, the world will be all the better for those ideas and thoughts and insights. You know, like the fact that we like to be prepared gives us a sense of security, but actually preparation is a good thing. You know, we need people who can do detailed research and analysis or who can write detailed reports. Um, people that look at things in depth rather than skirting over everything and just um, you know saying the first thing that comes into their head so I think understanding our shyness then leads us to uncover our skills and then we can work with those skills I think I spent so much time feeling as though I just wasn't enough of um, you know, I wasn't outgoing enough or loud enough or um, able to kind of blag my way through things enough, you know, worrying that I was lacking rather than focusing on the things that I'm actually good at. Um, 
I think feeling feeling shy it feels like you've got this button pressed often um a kind of mute button you've got so much going on but the button's pressed and you're kind of trying to say stuff that no one can hear you um if we can find a way of pressing the unmute button um we'll be able to be more present and speak up and um you know get the recognition that we deserve um, in order to do that, we need to feel safe. So um, I don't know if you've heard of, if you know what psychological safety is, um, but psychological safety is essentially, it's a fa fancy way of saying um, that we like to feel snug. So, um, th and there's nothing shameful in feeling safe and snug. I think often we're told that um, comfort zones are bad and that we have to push ourselves out of our comfort zones. Well, yeah, we do have to um, push ourselves forward a little bit at a time, gently, um, but I think we also need to look after ourselves and make sure we feel comfortable um, in order to do that. So when we feel comfortable, perhaps we are um, in an environment surrounded by people who make us feel secure. We've got the information we need in front of us. We've done our prep. We've, you know, we've covered all different eventualities. Um, we feel safe enough to press the unmute button. So there's nothing wrong um, with kind of setting yourself up to feel snug um, and secure so that you can then speak up. I think that ties into my next point about kindness. Um, when you're shy, we tend to be really hard on ourselves. Um, feeling shy can be limiting and frustrating um, and we don't need to add to that if we um, are constantly kind of berating ourselves for you know perhaps not saying the right thing at the right time or saying it loud enough or for not um, sharing our idea in a forceful enough <laughs> way and then we kind of come down on ourselves like a ton of bricks oh you're terrible you're never gonna make it you know the dialogue we have with ourselves is not always kind so in order to be more mighty um we shy people need to start being kinder to ourselves so focusing like i said on our strengths celebrating our achievements and perhaps trying to talk to ourselves the way we would talk to a friend rather than being as overly critical as we are. I think talking about shyness openly is a really positive step, not just for shy people, but for everybody. Um, when you feel shy, you often feel isolated and alone but the statistics tell us that over half of people are shy. So if that's the case, then surely in every room, um, you are not alone. There are other shy people around you. It's just, we're not talking about it. So remember that it's actually normal to feel shy. Um, the chances are, you know, the person sitting next to you might feel shy too. And, you know, perhaps your manager feels shy or, um, colleagues also feel shy too but just nobody's talking about it so I think admitting to feeling shy being talking about it in a way that is not sh ashamed um, invites people in and invites them to share their experiences too um, another technique I use to help me feel um, more mighty is to think about a bigger purpose. So when I feel nervous or self-conscious or like I can't do something because people are looking at me, um, I try to focus on a purpose. I try and think about why I'm doing what I'm doing. 
and how I'm going to be helping other people or the impact that I'm having um, on my community or um, where I live or society or the world at large, but something that's bigger than me. Um, sometimes when we have these feelings of shyness or anxiety, we become kind of mm, so inwardly focused on those feelings, on the thing we're afraid of, the worries that we have and the impact, you know, the, then the physical symptoms. Oh gosh, I'm blushing. Oh gosh, I'm all shaky. And it's harder to see the big picture. Whereas if you think, okay, um, I really want to share this idea because when I do, I know it's going to help other people. Or I know that when I say, when I speak up, um, other people will feel reassured or perhaps it will inspire somebody else to share their idea. You know, that stuff is bigger than the fact that your tummy is like a washing machine. So um, finding a purpose that's bigger than your fears. Um, when you feel shy, you feel like you're not in control. You feel like you're a victim of circumstance often. And sometimes the world is noisy and yeah, it has been designed. <laughs> Things have been designed by outgoing people. We celebrate extroversion and outgoingness. Um, in our society we do and so it often feels like the world isn't quite made for us we don't fit in it's hard to get a word in and you know everything there seems to be an element of performance in everything from sport to writing to art you know celebrity everything is around this idea of um being seen and being famous um, in a work environment too and I think sometimes that can make us feel helpless but actually if we take control we, we have choices we can take control of our lives I believe in any situation we have things that we can control so for example if you're in a work environment and people talk over each other and it seems like you can never speak up in meetings and the longer it goes on, you um, just can't get a word in and the more silent you are, the harder it is. Um, that could continue and it would be very frustrating. But I think that there's always options, no matter how junior or how young you are, you can um, perhaps email an idea in advance or hand a note to the person facilitating the meeting or um, ask for there to be a suggestion box or um, explore techniques for meetings like silent meetings which is a, a thing they do in America particularly um, where people spend time thinking during meetings you know there's lots of ideas and things you can put forward that would be more conducive to the 57 percent um so you're not a victim of any scenario i don't think and it's up to us to make choices and do things in a way that works for us okay so let's talk about pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone so we talked about being snug but what about doing big brave things well I believe in something called comfortable courage um taking steps forward a bit at a time like a tiny bit at a time so you know if the idea of speaking in front of other people freaks you out to the point where you might have a panic attack well start small and to someone who's outgoing and, and very very kind of sure of themselves starting small might mean something different to you so for you it might mean um attending the meeting in the first place you know i've met people that can't even enter the room um, let alone speak in front of a group so it's not a question of starting necessarily by 
sharing your ideas or putting your hand up in front of a small group. Um, if that's too difficult, then take it back a step or, and another step. Go really small and then build up gradually. I think of it like going to the gym. Um, you know, when, I, when I'm training, um, so for example, I do boxing. And so at first I was too nervous to even go in the gym. I mean, the thought of entering the building was too much let alone having a fight so you have to build up to it you have to build up to it one tiny step at a time so you start by um you know, entering the building then maybe you speak to a trainer that's step two then you have a session one-to-one -one with a trainer and you do that for a while then maybe you have the confidence to go to a class yeah, and all that's the kind of the easy stuff before you do any sparring, let alone fighting in front of hundreds of people. So just tiny incremental steps forwards um, so that you progress, but in a way that never really feels um, too uncomfortable. Yeah, tiny steps forward one bit at a time. Okay, now... The third point um, that I wanted to make is about assistance. So you might not be shy yourself, um, but you might work with shy people or be mentoring a shy person or shy people. So what can people in general do to help shy people shine? Well, there's things you can take from the stuff I've shared about talking about shyness um, perhaps these little steps and, and realising that they need to be very small. Um, perhaps about encouraging them to take control of the situation, encouraging them to think about a purpose, um, encouraging them to be nice to themselves, to be kind, all those things. But practically speaking as well, I would say... Don't push people too hard. You know, we've all, all shy people have stories. <laughs> we've all got traumatic tales of being forced to do things that, you know, literally like being shoved out onto the stage, that kind of thing. Off you go. Don't be shy. You can do it. Big shove. You know, that kind of thing could it could be okay, they might rise to the occasion, but they may also end up with some kind of PTSD and you definitely don't want that. So don't force people. I think also don't deny people's shyness. Um, I've, been, I've had people say this to me and we've, I'm sure everyone has, you know, you're not shy, don't be so shy. You don't know. Um, you don't know how somebody's feeling. And, and actually, if they feel like they are shy or they feel shy in that moment, then, you know, allow them to have that, um, to have that emotion. Don't dismiss it. Um, shy people need time to warm up. So they need a little bit more time um, sometimes, particularly in new or high pressure situations. Um, they might need a little more time to think and formulate their ideas or to prepare. Um, they'll feel more comfortable if they've had time to put um, effort and thought into their work and they'll produce higher quality work. Um, but rushing people and putting them on the spot is um, not, a, it's not kind of, doesn't make peop shy people happy. Um, I think, yeah, putting them on the spot makes people flustered and stressed, um, which is not a good idea. <laughs> well, you can do it if you want, but you won't get the best out of it. Um, if people find speaking up difficult, you know, obviously encouraging them to speak up, but also looking at alternative communication platforms. So, um, you know, we, you, you might have noticed that you have um people in your world in your orbit who send a lot of whatsapp messages for example 
but they won't leave a voicemail. I'm one of those people. And why anyone would leave voice messages on WhatsApp, I actually just don't know. Um, we won't do that either. We'll be we'll write messages, and we like to write. It's no surprise that there are a lot of shy people who are writers. Um, so we like to think things through, word things, um, you know, carefully word them. There's less pressure. So if you have people um, who you work with who are like that, that's OK. Um, you know, different communication styles, um, media um, are fine. Um, when you have a new shy person in your, perhaps somebody joins an organisation or your team, they, they may warm up and relax. Um, and you might just find that they're shy and a bit awkward to start with, but once they feel like they're part of the gang or the family, then they, their feelings of shyness dissipate because it's about comfort and safety. So I know I've worked in teams where you know, after a few months, you literally wouldn't have a clue that I was shy, except I wouldn't leave anyone a voicemail message. But at work, I would be quite silly and carefree and mess around with everybody and it would all be fine. But that's because they were like my family at work. Um, so you might notice that in the beginning, somebody comes into a team and they just need time longer than you would expect to warm up to everybody. Um, and you can help manage that with mentoring or a buddy, um, things like that to you kind of help people warm up. Um, if you um, find somebody's kind of holding back a lot, maybe not speaking up in meetings, um, the last thing you can do is, um, you know, shouting at someone to be more confident or just relax. Oh, that's not very helpful, um, <laughs> particularly not in front of other people. That would be terrible. Um, a quiet word, you know, we like talking to people one at a time um, in a safe space. So perhaps, you know, going into a pod or in a cafe when they're open and having a nice chat one to one with somebody and asking questions, open questions about how they're feeling, you know, perhaps suggesting gently, perhaps you might need a bit more support. Is there anything I can help with? What would make your life easier? That kind of thing. Um, so questions are good rather than kind of telling people to stop being a certain way. Um, often kind of the setup in buildings, I mean, things are a bit different now because of the virus, but um, noisy environments for, you know, open plan offices um, can be quite difficult for us because it's not only distracting, um, it's hard to be heard. We feel overlooked and observed, which makes us feel a bit self-conscious. So, if somebody in your team needs a quiet place to think or to, to do their kind of deeper, the deep thinking, um, then that might help productivity than expecting everyone to flourish in the same noisy environment. Um, in terms of meetings, um, like I said, huddles or one-to-ones are a good way of going because um, it might just be a really big leap for somebody who's shy to speak up in front of lots of people. So um, by having kind of small huddles with three or four people um, regularly, that's a good way to get people um, feeling comfortable and encouraging them to, um, to share their ideas. Um, I don't know if this applies to you, but... Um, I don't know if you and I don't know if you've noticed, but often um, more outgoing people are more likely to share their achievements um, and sort of big toot their own horns. Um, we will never do that. So if you have a situation where people are sort of putting themselves forward for promotion, for um, recognition, you are by the nature of the thing, missing a large chunk of people because they won't put themselves forward. So 
um, it would be um, a nice idea to have people championing others um, and perhaps encouraging them to um, share their achievements but also perhaps celebrating them um, you know on a blog or um, through kind of awards etc where they're not you're not relying on people um, wanting to big themselves up. Um, it's not enough to just bung in a few structures and then forget about it. Um, I think the combination of these areas, the uh, actions, the assistant and assistance and the awareness is where it all comes together and um, shy people are taking responsibility for themselves. There's structures in place, um, but also everyone's kind of looking out for things. You know, I, I heard a story whereby someone was very frustrated because one of their team would was just refusing to make phone calls they'd been asked to call these random people like cold calling they'd been asked to do it and they just wouldn't do it and there was such a lack of understanding as to why someone might feel very ill-equipped or unable to do that and because the person it, it involved didn't do it it caused all kinds of drama and animosity but you can see that when you've got different structures in place when you've got understanding and you've got shy people kind of taking ownership of their shyness that kind of thing won't happen anymore um and so that's yeah that's why i'm on this mission um a softly spoken mission to help shy people to be more mighty and um, to talk about shyness to help shy people to find their voice um, so that we can unleash the, the silent potential in our society um, and ultimately so that we can step out of the shadows us shy people so we can speak up and be heard and, and, and we can shine so yeah if we work together I think as a society in these three areas, awareness, actions and assistance, then I think we'll be better placed um, to do that. Um, so, yes, that's what I wanted to tell you. But before I go on to answering your questions, I want to say that I know some of you probably won't want to ask a question and that's OK. Um, if you go over to my website shinemighty.com you can message me on there um, I work with um, private clients um, I have a group program shy potential and a membership shine mighty society and a kids program as well so um, yeah there's lots of things that can help um, but ultimately yeah, if you need a hand just you can also email me nadia at shyandmighty.com and i'll be happy to help you and as paula mentioned my book i finished writing my book and it's coming out next year i'm going to be publishing um well my publishers are going to be publishing um my book shy and mighty and also there'll be a kids version as well um around the same time so next april um, the books will be out so you'll have to wait a bit for those <laughs> but thank you for listening and um, if you've got questions then please ask away and I will endeavour to um, to help you thank you so much Nadia that was so brilliant and thank you oh, for thank being, you thank you for being so honest and open with us about how you feel and and all those top tips about how how we can help um, adults that we know and also help our girls. There's some great questions in the chat that I'm going to um, just run through some of them. Um, Alison was asking, are introverts shy or can extroverts be shy? And is shyness different from being an introvert? Yeah, that's I knew someone was going to ask. That. <laughs> um, I always get asked this. So introversion is not the same as shyness, although they are kind of related, sort of like cousins. So introversion is about getting your energy. Um, you get drained from being around other people too much and you you like being alone. Um, that kind of gives you energy. You can be a shy introvert or a shy extrovert. 
Um, so I'm a shy extrovert. I like being around other people, um, but I'm shy. So when there's a big group of people, um, I don't feel like I can just sort of butt in and share my ideas with them. Um, so I have the kind of the self-consciousness and awkwardness and caution that goes with shyness, even though I get energy from being around people. Um, so you can see they're sort of similar but different. So people get very confused, um, but it is possible to either get your energy from being alone or from others, but still be shy. Okay, thank you. That's really good uh, explanation. Um, and Beth was asking, can you distinguish between shyness as a personality trait and a lack of confidence? Yeah, so confidence, hang on, there's a fly, pesky fly. Um, Okay, confidence, I'm, so I'll give you an example. I am confident um, in my boxing abilities. I'm confident that I could um, smash somebody up if I wanted to, right? I'm confident. I know I've trained, I've got the techniques, I know my stuff. I'm shy because I don't want to do it in front of any people, I don't, I don't like people looking at me. I feel awkward and self-conscious that like they're judging me or laughing at me. I feel embarrassed. So it's, again, there's overlap, but it's different. So you might find that one of your girls um, is, a, is confident at maths, but when it comes to an exam, they crumble because of the situation. Or maybe, um, you know, I was good at French, but I found it really hard to talk to people in French. I could read French books, watch French films, translate stuff, but it, you know, and I was confident about it. But then I was shy because I couldn't, um, you know, give a talk in French or um, talk to a room full of French people. <laughs> yeah, I see. Uh, thank you. Um... Uh, Louise has asked, do you think the use of a diary is useful for shy people to record what they've achieved in little steps because they can look back on it? And so. Yeah, so I think um, diaries are a good thing for lots of reasons, so, or journaling, if you prefer to call it that as an adult. Um, so it's a good way of expressing your feelings, which I think as a shy person for a start, we tend to have our feelings and thoughts going around our head and it's a good way of getting them out so mm -hmm. first of all but um because I encourage this kind of mighty um well in the mighty mob which is for kids or in the shine mighty society um we do mighty missions so we take steps forward every week so there's something to do every week and it's about this you know practicing and so a simple way of doing that would be to challenge yourself to build on something one step at a time. And to, I think to record your progress is a nice idea. I also do um, something called a mighty measure. So every month or so people kind of check in and, and say, how mighty are they feeling? How often did they feel shy this week? Um, so that you can sort of get a sense of how you're um, developing your mighty muscles. Brilliant, thank you. Um, another question here is, um, um, how do you deal with people who do not recognize that you are shy? Do you tell them directly to help them understand it or do you just be shy? I think, um, I've started to kind of say it more openly. So for example, if I'm giving a talk, I'll mention it um, because I think sometimes for me, it's, a, it's sort of like the elephant in the room. I don't know, I feel like it's all, I'm, I'm acting in a way that if you didn't know I was shy, you might wonder what on earth is going on with me. So it's kind of okay to say it. I, I like to be honest about things. I don't like to sort of pretend. Um, I I wouldn't just go around saying, oh, hi, everyone, uh, you know, I'm shy. But I would say, you know, I just feel a bit awkward about this or I don't know, I feel uncomfortable, everyone's looking at me. I, 
you know, I say that sort of thing all the time. And I think people are more likely to support you when you say things like that or encourage you. Um, rather than nobody's going to laugh at you. <laughs> and if they do, then you probably shouldn't be hanging out with them, really. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I agree with that. Um, uh, someone has asked, um, can shyness be on a spectrum? Can you be very shy or yeah. not, very, not only a bit shy? Yes, I didn't really go into that, did I? There's definitely a kind of scale. In fact, sci psychologists have got... Um, there are shyness scales um, out there. There's a, a number of different ones. Hang on, I'm just going to let the dog in. Because he's <laughs> Come on. No. Oh yeah, he's coming in. Um, so there's actually a couple of different shyness scales um, that are measured in different ways. But all you really need to know is you can be a little bit shy sometimes. So that's kind of situationally shy. So you might think, you know, I'm not a shy person, but faced with an audience of 100 people, I'm shy. Um, through to dispositionally shy, which is I'm a shy person, I'm pretty shy a lot of the time. Through to social anxiety, which is the extreme end. I think um, there's been a kind of... Oh, it's very complicated and I write about it in my book but social anxiety has become a bit of a buzzword and essentially it's extreme shyness um, but I think someone who is shyness is not a mental illness we're not ill um, it's a personality type so I think we need to be a bit careful about labeling ourselves in that way um, so just kind of being aware that when people talk about social anxiety, essentially, they are talking about extreme shyness. Um, but yeah, I could go on about that for ages, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, also, we have a question from Jan asking about being, um, can you be authentically shy at an interview? I mean, if you went for an interview, so a lot of our girls are shy and we help them with their interview skills and things. What's what what would be a tip for you, you would give to a, um, a young girl going for interviews and she's terrified? She's very yeah. shy. How does how does that affect the performance? Um, I've actually just put um, a podcast episode out specifically on job interviews on, on the Shy Mighty podcast. I think it's actually the latest episode. So have a listen to that. I think um the thing with shyness is it kind of shows you care. Um, if you were the sort of person who just waded in and didn't really care what anybody else thought about you and you had no regard for um, people, how you might come across, you know, that's actually a negative thing. So I would, <laughs> if someone said, what are your weaknesses? You could say, well, you know, um, I sometimes get too caught up in what other people think of me. Um, you know, or I, I sometimes am quite cautious. Um, I'm a shy person. Like you could say it like that. And I actually think you could say that, um, you know, um, I recognize that I'm a shy person, that I'm not broken. And actually the world needs quieter people too. People who think things through deeply. Um, and don't you know talk constantly <laughs> yes brilliant yeah well that's <laughs> great thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's your dog. Good dog thank you for the um the, uh, the podcast that we'll we'll uh, we can have a listen to as well and there's loads and loads of information on your on your website and thank you for your generosity in making it so widely available for people to learn from that's oh, uh, you're welcome and actually i have to tell you about something fun i'm working on at the moment it's called it's a magazine a mini magazine mm. called unmuted and um it's not on my website yet but if you sign up on my site or you email me i can send you the details but i want to be sharing um stories and experiences from shy people giving shy people a voice um yeah, because I think we're too quiet. We're we're too silent. We're missing mm. from the from the the conversation, and so kind of showing girls and young people in general, particularly that you know you can achieve big things when you're shy, and feeling like this is actually normal. Mm. 
Thank you so much. That's That's been um, really enlightening and really, really helpful for us as we talk to the girls who might be struggling a little bit in a really refreshing, positive um, slant on looking at a personality type. So thank you so much, for um, Nadia, for, for um, speaking to us today. Thank you to all the mentors who have, um, have joined us. It is just six o'clock. We've had some great... Um, Lots of uh, thank yous in the chat, Nadia, and they still, they're coming rolling in um, that you can have a look at and uh, everyone has really benefited from your honesty and from your openness. And thank you, thank you from all of us. Um, and thanks to the mentors for coming. We have, we've got just wrapping up on time. So how about that? <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. And yeah, if I didn't get to answer your question, just message me and afterwards and I'll, I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you, Nadia, and we will make the recording available for people who couldn't make it today.